Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is lecture number 22, The Highest Profession of All. My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you, Jim? Fine. Thank you, Rick. Thank you again for inviting me. It's really a pleasure to be here. It's actually an honor to experience, you know, the possibilities of being listened by the entire human race, if it is possible, of course. So thank you for allowing me to be here. Thanks to everybody. So the title today, again, is The Highest Profession of All. Lecture number 22nd. You know, number 22, 22nd, in the ancient Tarot and Kabbalah, you know, from ancient Egypt and also the Hebrew Kabbalah, number 22nd represents the return. The return to what? The return to the Absolute. Remember that we said it before in many other lectures, the Absolute is the homeland of the Spirit. Our own homeland, you know, because we said it before, we are all spiritual beings. We have a body, we have a mind, we have a soul. We are not the body. We only have it. So essentially, you know, after a journey, an incredible journey, when we descended into the universe and we were allocated in different planets, and now the time has come to return, to come back, to the Absolute, the homeland of God. You see, so this is interesting because what's, what are we trying to say when we describe it, trying to explain what's the highest profession of all? Why are we here, you know? Why, why are we all here without exception? Remember that when we were immersed within the universe, when we descended as spiritual beings, our, you know, we are made of light. The spirit is light. And the absolute is a, uni is a universe made of pure light. In Christianity and Catholicism, they talk about the star of Bethlehem, which is behind our physical sun. And behind every physical sun, there is a spiritual sun. That the spiritual sun is the absolute that created the physical sun and created all physicalities, created the entire galaxies, and groups of galaxies organized called infinite. So we could say that we descended for a purpose. Why are we here? We descended to return to the absolute, you know, but transformed into a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of intelligence, a higher level of wisdom, a higher level of loving capabilities, perfection within perfection. This is why we are here. So we could say the universe is made of water and fire. You know, of course, there are many other elements. There is a table of elements, you know, minerals and all kinds of elements. But let me analyze this. The two main elements are water and fire. The Bible speaks about that. But you know, most of planets, when they are alive, because a moon is a dead planet, most of planets have water. The main element is water. But where is the fire? The fire lives inside of water. You see, when we analyze where electricity is coming from, well, electricity is coming from the air, but it's also coming from the ocean, from rivers, from lakes. We extract the fire, the electricity, from water. So don't forget that. Fire lives inside water. And when we are made of water ourselves, we're 80, 90% pure water. You see? So there is a fire within ourselves within that water. Now, you know, many scientists have tried to do experiments to create, you see, to create a particle of water, a molecule of water, 
they combine, you know, H, they say H2O, which is two particles of oxygen, I'm sorry, hydrogen, one particle of oxygen. And they've done the experiment, okay? They bring the hydrogen and they bring the oxygen and they try to combine it. And suddenly there is no water. There is something different than water. What is missing there? Please pay attention to my words. What is missing? In a laboratory experiment where they brought hydrogen and oxygen to recreate water. Do you know what is missing? Fire is missing fire. You see, you cannot recreate water if there is no spirit within. Because the light transforms into fire and water. The masculine and feminine aspect of the divinity, of the light that descended from the absolute. So when we write down the formula for water, H2O, that formula is incomplete. Why is it incomplete? Because the element fire is not there. Show me. H2O. Maybe the letter F should be appear somewhere, but it's nowhere. That proves, dear listeners, that proves that we are ignorant on purpose. We deny to ourselves maybe the most important element of nature, which is fire. When we die, we lose our fire. This is why the physical body becomes cold. The fire is gone because the spirit is gone. There is no life anymore. It's only a dead body. So how can we deny importance to the fire? Okay? So we are here, dear listeners, to transform what descended from the absolute into a higher level of fire. We said we descended as a little piece of light which is an atomic particle that lives in our heart. That tiny little particle, at the end of the times, when we return to the absolute, if it didn't transform into a flame, it means that we will return to the absolute as a failure. So the highest profession of all was enriched. The highest objective of life, you know, didn't happen. Because something went wrong with our journey. We were not aware of the purpose of life. And you know, if we ignore in a simple formula, in a simple mathematical formula or connected with chemistry and physics, if we ignore the element of fire, it means that we are ignoring the most important reality of all realities, which is our own essence of life we should fire itself, our own spirit, our divine light that crystallized into fire. So again, the highest profession of all, most of people would say, oh yeah, I would love to become a doctor when you are a child, you know. What would you like to be when you grow up? Oh, maybe an engineer, you know, I would love to make money and also I would love to build things. What about an accountant? What about an economist? Or what about a politician? Whether about a lawyer or a judge, maybe a police officer, etc., etc., etc. You see, but everybody ignores that shouldn't we learn to increase our level of fire instead of being a tiny little spark that lives in our heart? Shouldn't we be concerned about awakening that fire and making it grow and grow and grow, which is psychological growth? inner growth. It's important to analyze, you know, we descend from the absolute and we enter into the universe, into matter. Matter is coming from Latin that means, you know, mother. Mother is a woman, mother nature, mother earth. So essentially, the spirit descended into matter and, you know, made matter pregnant with life. And here we are. You see the masculine and feminine aspect. And then we enter into th three different kingdoms. 
as spiritual beings, the mineral kingdom, the vegetal kingdom, the animal kingdom. Many scientists are totally convinced that the mineral kingdom has no life. Well, with all respect, we are telling them the mineral kingdom is as alive as we are. How do you explain the multiplication, you know, in a mine, the multiplication of the minerals? How do you explain that? Because they also procreate, you know, life through themselves, through a masculine and feminine aspect of the mineral kingdom. And this is why, you know, in a mine, we find a concentration of a specific minerals. So the mineral kingdom is alive. Why? Because it has a spirit inside. There is life inside. If we cannot see it, it doesn't mean it's not there. We don't have the instrument yet to be able to perceive the reality. But sooner or later, we will get there. The vegetal kingdom, everybody agrees that it's alive. Of course, yes, it's alive, you know. Plants multiply. We see the forest, the jungles, beautiful species amongst, you know, the vegetal kingdom. And it's also very much alive. When we bring plants into our home, we realize that if we don't take care of those plants, they will die. You know, it means that the spirit will be gone. The fire that lives within the vegetal kingdom will be gone. What about the animal kingdom? So many species within the animal kingdom. Millions of species. Beautiful species. Now, what about us? Are you aware that all of us, without exception, carry within ourselves the mineral kingdom, the vegetal kingdom, and also the animal kingdom? You see, we have the minerals of the mineral kingdom within our own system. We have the vitamins of the vegetal kingdom within ourselves. And also the animal kingdom, we have the proteins within ourselves of the animal kingdom. So it means that this is a long journey before we became the way we are today. Now, are we humans today? Are we really humans? We call ourselves the human species. According to Gnostic anthropology, we are not. We are half away between the animal kingdom and the real humans, you know, kingdom. The real Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens in Latin means the human with sapientia. Sapientia means wisdom. Are we sure about that? Are we sure that we are really so wise? Why are we in troubles? Why is it that the entire human race today is experiencing tragedy after tragedy? Wars, violence, poverty, hunger, crime, suffering after suffering. Why is that, you know? If, don't you think that if we were really wise, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like this? It shouldn't be like this? Is it possible to create paradise on earth? The answer is yes. Only when we have learned to become wise, we can create paradise, according to the Bible. But because we are not wise enough, there is no paradise on earth. So, can we say that we are a species? Yes, we are. We are part of the animal kingdom, but we are not humans. Is there then a human species? Well, we could say that it's a real human being's kingdom. That is a real human being's kingdom, but it is not us. We are not part of the real human being's kingdom. Because real human beings, we said it before, have 12 senses. They are our real ancestors. According to the Bible, the Adams and the Eves, they were real humans. They were people who lived 1,200 years, up to 1,500 years. You know, they, they knew no illness. Illness didn't exist. They live longer than we live today. They were gigantic individuals. We said that before, there, are, there is evidence about what I'm saying right now. Recently in Greece, were found skeletons, gigantic skeletons, where their head was half of the size of our entire bodies. 
I have seen the pictures. I can send pictures to everyone who is willing to know about it. Just look into the, in the internet. For a mysterious reason, governments and the military and other institutions, the, even the corporate world, is denying that possibility. They prefer to believe that we descended from the cave people. We said that before. There is a lecture about that. You know, evolution, involution, revolution. We don't descend from the cave people because they lived only 8,000 years ago. The man of Cro-Magnon, the man of Nardental, only 8,000 years ago. And we've been around for more than a million years. There were two global catastrophes before. The Bible described them, Sodoma and Gomorrah, that happened millions of years ago. And the last catastrophe that was Atlantis, there were three catastrophes in Atlantis, connected with Atlantis. The first one, one million years ago. The second, 25,000 years ago, when the pyramids were built in Egypt. And the third catastrophe, 10,000 years ago. Well, here we are. You see, our ancestors are the people who created, who built the pyramids in Egypt, and also the pyramids in Mexico. You see, they were not the extraterrestrials who did it. Actually, when you are a real human being, you have the knowledge and the wisdom to travel to other planets. Did you know that? How were those heavy stones mathematically cut with incredible precision and they were transferred from faraway lands to create the pyramids in Egypt and in Mexico? They knew how to make matter levitate. They knew about it. They had the knowledge about the universe. The Aztecs, the Mayans, and the Incas in America, and in Tibet, you know, and the ancient Egyptians learned from the ancient Tibetans how to create those pyramids. So our ancestors were super beings compared with us. We should say real humans, real homo sapiens. Now, so when we speak about now the real human beings' kingdom, don't call them a species. We are an species because we are an animal species. Intellectual animals. Take away the intellect. Okay? Let's take it away and see what happens. We should meditate about that. Real Homo sapiens live in a parallel universe. The fourth dimension, the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh dimension. You see? And they are, they are our real ancestors. We could say they are solar people. Because their bodies, they transform their bodies from our actual stage into a higher stage, which is the real alchemy and Kabbalah that we spoke before. Alchemy is the science of transformation of matter from lead into gold. It's learning to spiritualize matter. Well, this is what real human beings have done. They learn to transform their lunar particles into solar particles. Can we explain that? Of course. Let's try to do it. Do you know that the moon is a dead planet? You know, the native people from many, many countries, when you talk to them about the moon, you inquire about the moon with them, they will say, oh, the moon is the grandmother. It's our grandmother. Because Mother Earth is our mother. But the grandmother is the moon. It means that the moon was much older than the earth. Actually, before the earth was created, the moon existed. The moon was a planet with humanities within. But the moon, after millions and millions of years, died, perished. It became a dead body, a cosmic cadaver. And this is why today we are a new planet Maybe we lived in the moon before, and maybe we were reallocated here on Earth. So we could say that the moon died because it didn't fulfill its purpose within the universe. 
And are we going to have the same expedient than the moon? Are we going to become another, another moon? The answer is, unfortunately, yes. Yes. Because there are planets in the universe, even the sun. You know, the entire universe is alive. The sun is alive. Planet Earth is alive. The moon is dead. But there is life everywhere in the universe. Every atomic particle is alive. So essentially now, there are planets where their humanities are solar people. When people are solar, they bring their light into the planet. They reinforce the fire and the light of the planet itself. You know, that is a liquid fire within the interior of, of our planet. We also carry a fire within, as we said it. When we die, the fire is gone. But if we learn, if we become homo sapiens, we will be able to learn how to increase our own fire because the fire is there, it's within the universe, you see? And we have to learn to bring that fire into this part of the universe, into this three-dimensional world. So this is why there are planets that eventually will become suns, stars, because their humanities are successful. Their humanities have learned the purpose of life, which is to learn to illuminate the universe. Why is it that there is so much darkness in the universe? Because there is no enough light. Every star is a successful planet. Every sun carries humanities made of pure fire and pure light. Incredible, fantastic, ridiculous. It sounds like that, but just meditate a little bit. Angels are people made of fire. Some of them are higher. They are people made of pure light that breathe light. We don't like to talk about it. Well, let's talk about it, okay? Let's make an effort and let's try to understand life better. Let's try to understand we are also made of light. When we lived in the absolute, we were people made of light, pure light. We descended into the universe and we became solid the way we are. But when we return to the absolute, we will come back without the physical bodies. We will come back transform into energy and eventually we will, we will become pure light again. So don't Try to ignore this dialogue, because this is more than a monologue. This is a dialogue from soul to soul, dear listeners. We spoke before about the vertical line and the horizontal line. Remember that? There is a lecture about that. Most of people enjoy walking the horizontal line. Most of people. And a few prefer to learn to walk the vertical line. In a few words, those who walk the vertical line are the ones who are fed up with just being intellectual animals. Personally, I don't like to be an intellectual animal. You know, I don't like it because I know I have the potential to move into a higher stage. And I feel everybody deep inside feels the same. I'm not better than anybody else. We are all in the same boat. We are all having all kinds of experiences. And also, we are being led by superior beings that we call God. We are being led by our inner being, our inner God, to move into a higher levels, to be able to acquire more and more parts of the divinity within ourselves more and more spiritual forces within ourselves. So essentially, those who have learned to walk the vertical line are the ones who are interested in reaching masterhood. How can I be a master of my own life if I don't struggle against my inferior nature? Isn't it better to learn to become a master than to become a slave? Are we aware that most of people become slaves not only of other people, 
they also become slaves of themselves. You know, our own vices dominate us. So we become a, we become a slave of a cigarette, of a drug, of alcohol, of, you know, sexual orgies, you know, or whatever, sexual encounters, etc., etc., because we haven't learned to master ourselves. We haven't learned to master our own lives. So we have become slaves. And when you are a slave of yourself, you become a slave of other people. Do you enjoy being a slave? I'm telling you, most of people are suffering. Why are we suffering? Because we know deep inside that we are not the way we should have been. We are disappointed with ourselves. We end hating ourselves. And we transform the hatred, you know, into anger, frustration, depression, etc., etc. Far away from learning to be happy. But when we learn to awaken our inner potential to reach masterhood, of course, we discover happiness because we're also getting closer to the divinity, to our cosmic common father, mother. It's like we remember that we all descended from the absolute. Deep inside, we have forgotten, but deep inside, we all know there is something missing within our lives. So learning to reach masterhood shouldn't be a secret anymore. We should all learn to walk that path, which is the vertical line. There was another lecture called The Seven Rays, The Seven Spirits Before the Throne. And part of it, we describe the seven rays. Well, you know, the universe has been created through the law of three. Because the absolute has never been created. The absolute has always been, will always be. It will never die because it was never born. Something that our poor little brains will never be able to understand unless we transform our little brain into a solar brain. As we said that, you know, allow me to, to come back into the moon and the sun. The moon is at that planet and the moon you know, doesn't have the energy to, you know, reach us. But because the Earth is alive, the Earth is inhaling particles of the Moon. We could say the Earth, as a living organism, vampirizes the Moon. The Earth is eating the Moon. And this is why we're bringing particles from the Moon into the Earth. And this is why our physical bodies are made of particles of the moon. So that makes of us lunar people. Instead of inhaling the particles of the sun to recreate life on Earth, we are inhaling particles of the moon. And that makes of us lunar people. And also animals are made of the same composition, atomic particles from the moon. There are a few exceptions. There are some solar people living among us and there are also solar animals and solar solar species and solar vegetable vegetal species yeah there are you know very very unique species we are not going to discuss them today but as we said angelical beings who live on earth they are made of particles from the sun now, can we transform the particles from the moon into particles from the sun? The answer is yes. This is alchemy again. We could say lead is lunar, but gold is solar. You know, there we have a solar species within the mineral kingdom. So we carry that within ourselves. And if we learn to practice alchemy, and we will explain that slowly, slowly in the future. How do we learn to become an alchemist? Because if we can reach masterhood, it's because we have learned to incorporate the knowledge of alchemy within ourselves. And after we have done it, how do we become a true Kabbalist, which is a higher knowledge? So coming back now into the seven rays of creation, we have seven rays descending from the absolute. 
we have seven rays. The ray number one is the ray of creation. The ray number two is the ray of medicine. The ray number three is the ray of arts and love. The ray number four is the ray of justice. The ray number five is the ray of strength. The ray number six is the ray of politics and economics. And the ray number seven is the ray of death. Remember that we mentioned before that in, in that lecture of the seven spirit before the throne, that the seven planets of the solar system, they are, you know, connected with the seven days of the week. And this is why, because the universe has been organized according to the law of seven. Number seven is a cosmic law. It's the law of organization. So every day of the week corresponds to one of the seven rays. And as we said it before, there are seven spirits before the throne or seven Elohim or rulers of different planets that are connected with them. And they even have reincarnated on earth or some of them will reincarnate eventually later on earth. You know, the Archangel Gabriel, we can call them also Archangel because they are higher than angels. The Archangel Raphael, the Archangel Uriel, the Archangel Michael, the Archangel Samael, the Archangel Zachariel, and the Archangel Orifiel. So we could say the moon and the earth are connected with Gabriel and also Melchizedek. He's the king of the earth. Raphael is connected with the planet Mercury, Uriel with the planet Venus, Michael with the planet Sun, Samael with the planet Mars, Zachariel with Jupiter, Orifiel with Saturn. Now, Gabriel is connected with the ray of creation, Raphael the ray of medicine, Uriel with the, you know, arts and love, the ray of arts and love, Michael from the Sun, is connected with the ray of justice. Samael from the planet Mars is connected with the strength. Samael used to call the god Mars, the god of war in ancient times. But in reality, the real meaning of that is that it's a war between light and darkness or consciousness and unconsciousness. Now, the sixth ray connected with the planet Jupiter and the Archangel Zachariel is connected with politics and economics. And finally, the seventh ray connected with the planet Saturn, the Archangel Orifiel is the ray of death. Now, when people are being questioned, what would you like to be? Which kind of profession would you like to have? Well, according to the ray of creation, you know, it's like you know, people say, yeah, you know, I want to be a father. You are a lady. I want to become a mother. I want to have a family and children and grandchildren, etc., etc., and to have a happy life. The ray of creation. But do you know what the problem today? Allow me to say this with all respect for everybody. Do you know how many children come into the world without being planned? It's like many children come to the world by accident, a night of passion, and suddenly the, the lady is pregnant and the children is not wanted because it wasn't planned. And if they allow the child to be born, that child won't be loved unless the mother sacrifices enough. Or maybe we'll give the child for a, adoption, you know, we'll grow up with a different family. But do you know, when a tremendous percentage of our human race bring children into the world without consciousness, without soul consciousness, without planning, having a family, that is a, that's one of the causes of tremendous human pain. Because when children are not loved and they grow up in a negative environment, without affection, without respect, without love, the children, most of them, will jump into negative activities, self-destructive activities. 
and it will be an evident story because they will continue doing the same thing over and over again. Bringing children into the world, not wanted. But when you are planning to reach masterhood, walk in the vertical line, when you really want to learn to become a superior being, to ascend within this, the Jacob's ladder mentioned in the Bible, you plan to have a family. You love your children before they are born. And when they are born, when they come into life, you increase your loving capability because those children are bringing you so much joy. And it's been said that all children of love are beautiful. Of course, if there is love, and love is an aspect of the divinity. It means there is a spirituality in the sexual act. Do you know that when children are coming into the world, there is an angel connected with the Archangel Gabriel who makes the connection between the spermatozoa and the ovul. And if, if there is more than a child, well, that angel will make the connection of the different spermatozoa with the different ovules. And those babies will come into the world, not because of us, but because the hierarchies, the angels of karma are the ones who have written the book of life. So before we were born, we already have our destiny written based on our past lives. So listen to this. When you have learned to bring children into the world, and you are ray, because we all have a different ray. We all have seven. We all have, you know, from the seven rays, we all belong to a specific ray. So if you have learned to become a good father, a good mother, if you have the capability to ascend into masterhood, and you learn to become an angel, a superior being, and on the other side, you don't have to have a physical body because you created already solar, a solar body instead of lunar bodies. So you can, we can say you live in, within the parallel universes. You live in heaven. There are nine heavens. And your mission there on the other side will be that one. To make the connection between the spermatozoa and the oval of all of us who have become parents. Please remember my words. Does it sound ridiculous, incredible, new? Yes, it does. But yes, be patient. Let's try to connect from soul to soul. We are having a dialogue right now. This is not a monologue. So this is the difference between a common individual who brings children into the world without loving them by accident and the one who makes a plan consciously. There we can see the difference between an intellectual animal or the one who stops being an intellectual animal and is learning to become a true human being, a true homo sapiens. What about the second ray, the ray of medicine? How many people study to become doctors? There are so many specialties in medicine. Nurses also. So many kind of doctors. Now, when you only study medicine to make more money, because, of course, normally doctors make more money than average individuals. Normally, the practice of medicine in most of countries is not, you know, supported by government. So they have to collect through private medicine, private medical practices. They have to collect the money directly from the client, from the ill people. And the situation is, if you only care about that, about the business of medicine, and you don't care if your patient is suffering and it will die because maybe didn't have the money to pay for an operation, well, are you a good doctor or are you not? Maybe you study more books than other doctors. Maybe you, you've been doing your medical practice for so many years. You see, and apparently you have more knowledge than other younger doctors. But if you don't care about your patient, you only care about making money and money, money, 
Of course, there is a difference between you and an angel of medicine, because the founders of medicine in the Western world, which it came from ancient Greece, and also one of those individuals, you know, Paracelsus didn't come from Greece. Paracelsus, if we remember that name, he came from Switzerland. He wrote many books. Paracelsus, you know, those who are medical students, search for those books and study them. Nothing wrong with it. They are the fathers of Western medicine. And the other two known names are Galeno and Hippocrates. They are the fathers of Western medicine. But you know, these people, listen to this carefully, these people were not common doctors. You know, they learned ancient medicine from ancient China, ancient Tibet. They mixed what we call today alternative medicine with more modern medicine, Western medicine. But they also had that incredible knowledge to heal people for real, not to practice the business of medicine, but to really cure and also to teach the patient to heal himself, herself, because they really didn't pay as much importance to the profession of making money. They really pay more attention to healing and to transforming ourselves into real homo sapiens and to stop being intellectual animals. So there is a big difference. Please don't feel offended. Those who are listening to me, who are doing the medical practice, it's my duty to speak about this. What about the third ray? The ray of arts and love. This is connected with relationships. You know, people who are in love with each other. Well, of course, you know. Love is not only sex. Actually, sex without love should never be practiced. Because again, the risk of bringing children into the world who are not wanted is everywhere. So isn't it better for a couple to fall in love first? To be really in love, to establish a solid relationship for a lifetime before they jump into sexuality. And also the art, because Love making, making love, is also an art. It is an art. It is an art. You know, cooking is an art. It's not only singing and dancing and performing before a crowd or, you know, public speaking or whatever, or music, etc., etc. It's much more than that. But when you practice the arts and you're a composer and, you know, and you need drugs, to become more inspired, you are doing the wrong way. Because you should never do that. Inspiration comes from the universe. Inspiration comes from God within ourselves, in connection with God outside of ourselves. That's inspiration. It's knowledge, you know, inhaling from the, the universe. And basically, a true artist should never fall into the trap into the inferno of drugs. Now, you know, there are angels. There are angels of medicine, as we said it before, and Gnostic anthropology teaches us how to heal people, learning to connect with the angels of medicine. But we won't be able to talk about this today. You know, in another occasion, we will do it. It is possible when an illness is not developed too much. It is possible to heal people in a total different manner, in accordance with the power of superior beings, angelical beings, who are angels of medicine. Even there are temples, superior temples in heaven, where there are angels of medicine who can carry a person who is ill and heal that person through the distance. But we won't talk too much about that today. So coming back into arts, the founder of the School of Gnostic Anthropology, Samael Onveor, described that in one occasion he had the capability to travel within the parallel universes and visit a temple of music within the superior dimensions of space. 
and he described that at the entrance of the temple there was a guardian angel. He had to ask permission to the guardian angel before he could enter into the temple. And he said the face of that angel was so much illuminated, there was so much light that he couldn't even see his face. It was such an incredible, powerful, you know, light that emanated from his face. And later he knew, after he entered into the temple of music, that the guardian at the temple was the man that we call Ludwig von Beethoven here on earth. So Beethoven and Mozart were not common individuals. They were superior beings. And those historians who describe them, you know, as common individuals, full of, you know, lust and alcohol and orgies, probably they were speculating to make their stories more interesting. But in reality, we're talking about angels reincarnated on earth that came here to fulfill a purpose with a mission to help the entire human race to ascend into heavenly le uh, levels of consciousness. So what about justice, the ray of justice, the Archangel Michael? You know, it's connected with lawyers, the police, judges. How many lawyers are so corrupt? They defend criminals who, that everybody knows they are guilty. And if they have to buy a corrupt judge and also to buy a corrupt police, they will do it without hesitation. Of course, those people, if one day, you know, they have the power to ascend into higher levels, they will have to change drastically before they reach a higher stage of consciousness to reach motherhood. They will have to stop being corrupt police officers. They will have to stop to be corrupt lawyers, and they, they will have to stop being corrupt judges. Otherwise, they will never be able to ascend into higher levels of cosmic consciousness. They will never reach the angelic stage. Never. Please remember my words. And who is ruling this ray of justice is the Archangel Michael from the sun. What about the ray of strength? ruled by Samael Mars, connected with the military. How many generals today have become dictatorships? How many generals, you know, have made a war, a business, maybe one of the most powerful business today on earth? And those generals, of course, work, work in coordination and cooperation with secret services, with governments, and even with the corporate world. You see, those generals, who jump into wars without understanding the purpose of life will never ever be able to ascend into a higher stage of consciousness. They will never be, will have the chance to become angelical beings because they never understood that the real war is not outside, it is inside. We have to learn to annihilate our demons, our ego, our animal psychology, this is why we are intellectual animals, because we carry the ego within, the seven deadly sins, the Satan of all religions within ourselves, our inferior nature that has to be annihilated to reach levels of higher cosmic knowledge, cosmic intelligence. When we learn to ascend into the higher levels of matter and we annihilate the inferior levels of matter, is because we are learning to spiritualize matter, which is alchemy. Now, what about the sixth? The sixth ray, which is politics and economics. People, there are people who belong to this ray, like all the other rays. Politicians, normally, those who believe this is their vocation in life to become a politician. What about an economist? What about the man who wants to become a president of a nation? What about the king, you know, who still believes in monarchies? What about an MPP or an MP? That means a member of parliament or a member of a provincial parliament. And they all feel, oh yeah, I was born to do this. If you are a corrupt politician, 
if you are not there to serve people who elected you, if you only care about doing your private business and sometimes using taxpayers' money, you know, applying the psychology of Robin Hood reversed, well, you are in troubles. You will never be able to ascend into a higher level. You will never be able to reach masterhood. Maybe you can develop masterhood within the evil, but never masterhood within the angelical kingdom, which is the real human being's kingdom. So, Sahariel, ruling the planet Jupiter, is the archangel of politics and economics. Now, Sahariel was called in ancient times by the Romans, the ancient Romans, was called the god Jupiter. And the Greeks call him the god Zeus. He's the same one. So if you want to become an angel under the command of Sahariel or Jupiter or Zeus, you have to learn to be a true politician to serve mankind. You know, for example, Nelson Mandela, an amazing individual, Nelson Mandela recognized his mistakes. When he was a younger man, he was into violence. He was into, you know, supporting an armed struggle against the white people in Africa, in South Africa. He, was, he went even to jail for so many years, 27 years. But he confessed in his books, in his lectures, that he learned from Gandhi that the best way to defeat an enemy was through a pacific resistance. Because pacific resistance means what? When you oppose an injustice, you are teaching not only the slaves to stop being slaves, you are also teaching the slaver to stop being a slaver, but in a, in a peaceful manner. And this is why Gandhi had the power to expel the British Empire from India. Amazing. Yes, this is what he did. It's a pity there are no more Gandhis anymore, or very few. Well, Nelson Mandela confessed that he learned from Gandhi, and finally he ended up becoming the president of South Africa, the first black man in a country ruled by white people. And the same white people put him in power. Incredible? Yes, it was. It was. So there we can see. Either you practice the doctrine of the light, or we continue being within darkness. You see, I can give you many more examples, but in reality, Gandhi is a good example, and Nelson Mandela, a disciple of Gandhi. So what about the seventh ray, the ray of death, connected with the planet Saturn, Orifield, the Archangel Orifield? Well, you know, this is connected with priest, priesthood, and funerals, death. But it's also connected with prayer. This is connected with Saturday, planet Saturn. You know, these are the angels of death. When we die, an angel of death is the one who disincarnates us. He disconnects the physical body with the soul. You know, and they are the ones who do that work. There is another lecture that we will be talking about that in the near future. So, in a few words... Here we have described that what would happen to a priest who is really sincere in his vocation or her vocation as a nun or a priestess, you know, regarding helping humanity to ascend into higher levels of consciousness, of awareness, to reach masterhood, walk in the vertical path, the vertical line, or a priest that becomes corrupt that also, you know, not only ignore the doctrine, but also seduces children and commits all kinds of atrocities, which is happening, you know, through history and also in our modern times. Of course, those priests will never have a chance to ascend into an angelical kingdom because it doesn't happen just like this, because you study theology, but you never applied what you learned. You see, you become, became twisted. This is extremely important. And this is about every spiritual leader in every religion. Not only Christianity, also the Jewish or the Muslims or the Buddhist 
or the Hindus, etc., etc. They all make mistakes, but if we correct ourselves and if we change drastically for good, if we really learn to walk the path of the light, of course it's possible to reach the highest profession of all, which is what? Isn't it learning to become a true homo sapien, a true human being, a man who has learned to annihilate the ego, a man who has transformed himself from a lunar man-woman into a solar man-woman, and also the one who shares his knowledge, the one who learns to be a leader of himself and also teaches others to do the same, to become a leader of himself herself. Because we are all potentially designed to become leaders of ourselves and to stop being a follower. When you are a follower, you make a double mistake. You follow the wrong leaders or you never awaken your beautiful hidden potential. All professions are connected with the seven rays. We all have a vocation in life. We all were born with a vocation which is connected with our ray. We have a specific ray. My ray, personally, I have said it before, is the ray of justice. I'm here because I want to do justice to myself. I want to stop being an intellectual animal because I was given the potential to transform into a real human being. And my duty is to help others to do the same. If people don't want to listen, I respect that. If people don't want to walk the same path, of course, I will respect it because everybody has the right, you know, to do whatever they want with their lives. But remember this, we can do anything we want, but we also have to render account of our acts here and also on the other side. When we die, we are going to be judged by the angels of karma on the other side. What if someone uh, thinks for some reason that they're present existence, that the condition that they're in right now is too low, too hopeless. Is there such a person? Is it, is it hopeless for, for, any, for people? Or is it always possible to rise up like the phoenix bird? It, it, it is always possible. Yeah. For example, you know, I, I always talk to people begging on the street who are asking for money. I realize that most of them are alcoholic or, you know, into drugs. And even many of them have mental illness. But I always talk to them because I learn from them so much. And suddenly I find someone who lost his home because he became very ill and didn't like to go to the government to ask for help. And that person ended sleeping on the street out of pride. You know, they didn't want to accept, recognize that they were in such a stage of poverty that they decided to go to a shelter. But then in the shelter, there were many people who were violent and they decided to sleep on the street. Yeah. And suddenly on the street, they meet also a lot of <clears throat> criminal minded individuals, you know, which make them worse. But if you talk to them, there is a moment that you realize that. And then if you can give a little bit of hope, a little bit of hope, you treat them with respect. You try to see God within themselves and something happens to you and something happened to the other person. And you say hello to them when you see them again. And one day maybe they will walk away from the street and they won't be begging on them anymore. You know, I have seen that. I have been meeting people for years and now I don't see them. Maybe they pass away, maybe not. Maybe they decided to live a more normal life. Honest, sincerely, this is the way I feel. You know, I have met a lot of people who went to wars who experienced war, where they, their children were killed, their family were killed, some of them that were tortured, you know, and they were humiliated up to, up to incredible levels. Same situation, if you treat them with respect, if you really care about them, if you can give a tiny little piece of hope, well, anything could happen, anything could happen. You know, we shouldn't ignore anybody because everybody's in trouble today. Everybody. Even billionaires are in trouble. You know, you can lose all your billions in 24 hours. If you make a bad move, you know, another powerful individual can buy you out and suddenly they trick you, you lose everything. 
Mm. So everybody's suffering right now. We couldn't say, you know, only very unconscious individuals maybe are trying to enjoy life, but because of drugs, you know, it's an illusion. It's actually, you know, they are dreaming about being happy, but they are not really happy. Yeah, there's a lot of addictions. Very Most addictions for homeless people now are drugs and alcohol, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. They're very strong egos, very strong egos, you know. Yeah, we all have the ego, you know, we all have it. And this is the point that the, if by helping those people, we contribute to NALA our ego a little bit. Because indifference is the same cruelty camouflaged. When we look at them down, it's because of our ego. You know, we are not better than them. We believe we are. Maybe that person on the street could be a great singer, potentially, or a great pianist, you know or a great musician, you know, a great composer. But they lost their capabilities because of drugs and alcohol. But if you give them a tiny little help, just a conversation, you know, you don't have to give them money. Sometimes you don't have, you know, what they need. And well, a tiny little conversation can inspire them, you know, to walk away from it. Because that way we also pay for our karma. We pay by helping others. That's my approach. That's also my personal experience. I believe I have a lot of friends on the street. They are not real friends, but you know, we, we connect with each other. And that is a, you know, an incredible kind of relationship. They smile at me when they see me. And they even call me, hi buddy, and I say, yes, how are you? That's interesting, you know, it's important. We learn from each other. Remember, we all came from the absolute. And we will meet in the absolute in a million years from today, maybe. So we shouldn't ignore anybody. Thank you, Jim. That was a very interesting uh, lecture. You've been listening to Gnostic Lectures, lecture number 22, The Highest Profession of All. My name's Richard Rucroft. Uh, thank you to my guest, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. Thank you, Rick, for, again, for inviting me. Thanks to our listeners for having the patience to pay attention.